How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. As you guys know, I've been going hard with the GAMSAT videos. But this video is for the medical students. If you didn't know, I just finished my first year of medical school. And during it, I came across a lot of different resources. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about my top 5 best resources to study efficiently in medical school. Now let's start off with a bit of a side note. It is a known narrative that medical school is hard, right? When you tell someone that um, someone's going to medical school, they assume that their life revolves around medical school or that medical school takes up majority of their time. Now that is roughly true, but the notion of it being hard depends on how you define hard. If you define hard as the amount of information being thrown at you, then yes, medical school is hard. In medical school, you get thrown into the deep end with heaps of information on different major body systems and you have to um, work around it. However, after finishing my first year of medical school, what I realized is medical school will be as difficult as you make it to be. Yes, we're given heaps of information, but understanding that you don't need to know all of the information being thrown at you and only taking away you know the the, the top of that mountain the most highest yield uh, which is the which is a term that is thrown around med school every day uh, the highest yield of the information then you will be fine and this is where these resources come in i found that these resources mainly revolve around the high yield stuff even when the university lectures are kind of going hard with all these different details different information that i'm having to work with I can always come to these resources to know, okay, I know everything that exists, but this is probably what's going to be the most common things that come up in the hospital or the most common things that I'm, I'm likely to be tested on. So hopefully you guys try out these resources if you're in medical school and let me know what you guys think if you've already used any of them. Okay, let's jump into these resources. I'm going to split this video according to how we're actually taught in medical school. For example, say we're learning about the heart. What we're taught, number one, is the anatomy of the heart. The next thing we're taught is the physiology, right? So now that we know the structure of the heart, how does the heart actually function? Uh, the next thing that we're taught is pathology. So, okay, now, now we know what the heart looks like, how it functions, but what things can go wrong. And the last thing we are taught is, is pharmacology and slash management, but I just finished first year. We haven't really gotten to that. For now, I'm going to be touching through the best resources for anatomy, uh, physiology, pathology, and also the best resource that you could use to test yourself. Okay, now let's jump into our first topic, which is the anatomy. Now, I did an undergrad in biomedicine. I actually majored in anatomy. But the main thing I realized is that if you want to ace anatomy, you first have to realize what even is learning anatomy. I mean, if you've learned anatomy correctly, you can't just name a structure, but you also have a good spatial understanding of where that structure sits relative to other structures. How do we learn this? How do we get from point A, where you roughly know the name of something, to point B, where you can imagine this structure in 3D space? Now this is where this resource comes in. Now this resource is called Complete Anatomy. It's essentially an app that lets you play around with the human body and all its structures in, a, in, in three dimensional space. Now this app works best if you use it on a device such as an iPad where you can move it around with your fingers. Now let's dive straight into this app and let me show you guys what's so good about it. When you jump onto this app, you can see there's different options such as the Atlas, courses, videos, radiology stuff as well. But the main thing that I do use in this app is the models. So when I click on models, you can see there is a model here of a human body. It's essentially just bones right now because the other structures aren't turned on. But you can see I can easily move this structure around. I can zoom in, zoom out, and I can rotate it in any way, shape or form that I like. That's the best part of this app. You can move it around in three dimensional space and that should be the ultimate goal where you're able to do these movements in your head. But for example, right, I can zoom in on this structure. How I study usually anatomy is I'm looking at this structure and then I start asking myself questions in my head. First of all, okay, if I look at the structure in the middle, I know that this is the sternum. So I ask myself, okay, what are the parts of the sternum? So I know there is the manubrium, there's the body of the sternum, and there's the xiphoid process. And I know that the sternum is present in the, the thoracic cage. Okay, now that I've answered a few of these questions in my head, what I could do is on this app, just click or touch the sternum, and then it pops up this new window on the left with all this information about the sternum. And as you can see, it tells you where it is. So the thoracic cage, so I know that I was correct. Um, it's a flat bone, so see, that's something that I did not think about. 
um, but now that it's mentioned it I'm thinking about it and if I do this enough times this information will be cemented in my brain um, I could also go under the parts and those are the three parts that I mentioned the body the manubrium and the xiphoid so I think you guys get the point it's really easy you can zoom into many different structures and you just click on it and it gives you more information and obviously that's not just for the bones you can start adding for example the muscular layers um, and you can just keep adding the layers till till the muscle of interest pops up and you can click on it um, that should be the goal ultimately you want to reach a point where you're able to figure out where things are what what their course is in three-dimensional space by yourself in your head um, and you won't need the app ultimately but just for a start I think this app is great it's not a free app but I think it is a, a good investment if you are studying anatomy shift gears and move on to physiology my go-to resource for learning physiology um, or if it's if it's just little things if it's just little topics that I don't know about is osmosis I'm sure you've heard about osmosis it's the go-to it's like the Khan Academy for medical school however if I'm looking for some in-depth knowledge about the functionality of a body organ that uh, maybe the university lectures did not really explain really well or did not resonate with me my go-to resource is boards and beyond another um, United States resource it is really good because it runs through the basic physiology but also keeps it quite high yield it doesn't go into a lot of the details that the university lectures normally go into enough talking let me give you guys a tour alrighty so I just loaded up boards and beyond as you can see and um, the the part that is relevant for preclinical students are the step one videos so you can just click on step one and then you can see all the different body types come up the body systems come up um, so for example last semester we were learning about the renal system so I would just click on renal and you can see um, each body system is further stratified by what part of the system they're talking about for example for renal if it's embryology anatomy or physiology there's a bunch of videos now it's important to note I'm just not pumping through all the videos for no reason I'm only choosing picking and choosing videos that I have struggled with in the university lectures for example last year I knew I really struggled with just a normal physiology of the kidney in terms of all the ion transport and I just went through and watched renal physiology 1, 2 and 3. You can essentially just click on the video and the video starts playing. Now the other thing that's quite good about Boards and Beyond, uh, just turn the volume down because we don't want to hear it right now, is after every video there's also quizzes for you to practice on so you can just click on quizzes and then um, there's my past performance etc and you can keep testing yourself on that. Um, however, I know we do know the king of testing yourself is still coming up. We're going to talk about it at the end of the video and I think you guys already know what I'm talking about. But essentially, Boards and Beyond, what I love about Boards and Beyond is that they don't complicate the physiology too much. As you can see even in this case, the diagram is so simple that it's so easy to just understand what's happening visually. Whereas university textbooks often overcomplicate the diagrams with, with actually drawing in all the different structures and what they look like. Um, so if the university lectures aren't making sense, Boards and Beyond is a really good resource to run through the basic physiology. Um, the reason why I use Boards and Beyond over Osmosis for more complex stuff, I think Osmosis is a little bit more kind of bite-sized videos with not much continuity. Um, also, the, I, don't, I don't think Osmosis videos are that high yield compared to Boards and Beyond. So to me, Boards and Beyond is the go-to resource for learning physiology. Now, let's finally talk about pathology. What's my favorite resource for learning pathology? Now, if you guys have seen a few of my earlier videos, you might have already guessed it. My favorite resource of all time for learning pathology is Pathoma. So good, another United States resource. A lot of students in Australia are not that familiar with all of these USMLE resources, but they're so good. They're quite underrated here. Obviously, basically every medical student in the United States knows about these, but if you're in Australia and you don't know about these, jump on, trust me, they are so good. Okay, let's look at Pathoma. Pathoma is essentially the, the simplest way to learn pathology conceptually. Dr. Sattar runs through all these concepts, all these complex pathology concepts, just very, very simply. For example, let's say we're learning about the heart, right, and the diseases of the heart. Now, this is how a textbook would show the heart and its valves, and you can see it's quite complicated. It's, it's all drawn in. There's a bunch of labels. Whereas this is how Dr. Sattar would run through it 
it's so much simpler it's essentially just four chambers and that's essentially what the heart is right so when you take out all these random factors of visual stimuli that's throwing you off and just take boil it down to just the pathology um, that's when things start making sense for me. It is a video series. If you want to learn more about Pathoma, check out my video on Pathoma where I do a deep dive on why Pathoma is the best pathology resource. It also comes with a book to annotate and the book has all the high yield information written down in bullet points. So if you're looking for a good pathology resource that won't take up a lot of your time, Pathoma is the one to go for. What I usually do is say we're about to start the, the gastro block. What I would do is even before the university lecture start, I quickly watch all the Pathoma videos on gastro. Uh, it would take me maybe one day of studying to get that done. And I'm not really trying to memorize everything as Dr. Satar is saying. I just sit there, I literally just sit there and listen. And then when the university lectures talk about the same concepts, it just makes so much more sense because I already have a good foundation of the fundamentals. And because Dr. Sattar, what he does is instead of just telling you that something happens, he makes sense out of it. He tells you the logic behind why it's happening. That's why I think Pathoma sticks out compared to the university lectures. Now let's move on to the last part of this video. I need to sneeze. My favorite resource to test myself is Anki. Anki is the software that tests you through flashcards and the whole learning pedagogy there is spaced repetition. You do more of the questions that you're struggling with and my Anki workflow is a bit different. Now with Anki, right, everyone, I think everyone agrees that Anki works. It's a flashcard system. You're doing questions every day, you're actively studying and that's what makes the difference and you remember things. But I think where the difference comes is some students want to make their own cards either because they're scared that pre-made decks are not specific enough to their university or because they just don't trust someone else who made those cards. And there's this other clan, which I'm part of, that know that these pre-made decks are actually really, really good and saves a lot of time than trying to make your own cards. I think, honestly, you can't go wrong either way as long as you're studying actively using Anki, but these pre-made USMLE decks are actually amazing. Now all these resources I mentioned, for example, Boards and Beyond, Pathoma, there's also other resources like Sketchy which you could use for microbiology. Now what, what some of these people have done is gone through all of the videos and then made flashcards on each of the video. So say I watch a video from Boards and Beyond, so say I watch Renal Physiology number one as we looked at before. Now what do I do after that? I've watched the video, great. Now I know the content, how do I test myself? Now instead of me making cards on the video, I could just go on this pre-made deck made by this person called Zanki on Reddit and I could just activate the cards he made from that video because each card is tagged by what video it comes from. And now that these cards are activated, these new cards are added to the pool of cards that I've activated over time. So as I've watched more and more videos over time, I've activated more and more cards and now I have a pool of cards from only videos that I've personally watched. And now the Anki does its thing and then every morning when I wake up there's a, there's, a, there's a number of cards that I have to complete and I just go through it during the day and I finish my cards and then Anki does its thing in the back end and knows which cards to show me more often, which cards they think that I'm already good at and so I don't need to see that often. So Anki, get on it. I know you've probably heard of it but if you're not get on it seriously get on it is the best way to remember anything this year i've retained more information than any other year in my academic career cool guys we're at the end of this video time to do a quick summary a quick shout out the number one anatomy resource award goes to complete anatomy the number one physiology resource award goes to boards and beyond the number one pathology resource award goes to pathoma and the number one testing software resource award goes to Anki. I'm gonna be using these resources extensively going into my second year in 2021. Let me know what you guys think about these resources or if there are any other resources that I might've missed or I could try out next year. Otherwise, thanks for stopping by guys. Leave a like, leave a subscribe if you're looking for more content. Follow me on Instagram to see how medical school's going for me. Um, otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next video.